Alright, so is Big Brother at work again with respect to central bank digital currencies? So, elaborating more on the possible governance structures of such a CBDC system um, and pulling heavily from a recent paper uh, published in September 2022 by the White House's Office of Sec Science Tec Technology, right? Looking more at permissioned governance structures, right, for a CBDC. And it's one of those things, especially in terms of how it'll be structured, um, it seems like basically everyone, at least that I've heard, talk about CBDCs and how they'll be structured in general, kind of just assume this is what it's going to be. Even though the paper elaborates a bit on like permissionless systems, it's also the government we're talking about, so the odds of it being completely permissionless are probably not very significant. Right, and you can argue a separate point, which is fully welcome in the comments and so on, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so with permissioned governance structures, what exactly do we mean by that? So basically with the CBDC, in this case, um, it would be managed by a set of trusted entities, right? And most likely a US-based CBDC system will at least have one trusted entity, probably the Federal Reserve. Right, this kind of why it's called Fed coin sometimes and that sort of thing. This whole kind of concept of what a potential US CBDC system could be. Right. And basically one kind of I guess nuance to put in there um, is this design choice for governance structure doesn't necessarily assume the use of distributed ledgers. Right. It's purely just talking about the governance structures, not the type of ledgers, so kind of making that distinction just to put that out there right so what are some what what are some of the benefits or pros of a permissioned governance structure and keeping in mind a lot of this is coming from the point of view of the office of science technology right and so they argue that there there would be better protection of sensitive financial data right um, basically because it doesn't require a public ledger uh, the transaction history will be basically only available to um, those trusted entities, as they put, and I kind of put air quotes that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and this could also apply to peer-to-peer -peer transactions, right? And basically they have as a footnote, um, so it's not exactly like they're talking about it in depth, but they could have access as after the fact to transaction data, data right? Just to kind of they talk a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but again, it's kind of can get rather opinionated, especially with it being more of a governant type initiative that it probably won't really come to fruition, but at least they talk about it some, right? Another kind of benefit of a permissioned governance structure for a US-based CBDC would be it could simplify transaction remediation um, but also make it easier to prohibit um, anti-money laundering, or money laundering in general, I mean, and then financing terrorism, right? Getting into the whole AML, CFT compliance, that kind of stuff, right? Because it's already kind of more or less centrally controlled in a way. There are certain permissions that are necessary, right? So in contrast to the past couple of minutes, Right, some of the cons or I guess I should say negative consequences, right, of a permissioned governance structure for CBDC would be that the system may not be as transparent, and I kind of say may not as kind of a I don't want to say disclaimer. It's kind of as a uh, a qualifier, if you will, just to put it in there, and therefore it could be difficult to assume and gain con consumer trust, right? But it's also like for anyone who really kind of, at least from what I've noticed, from anyone who really studies this kind of stuff, um, they don't trust it to begin with. And that's a big proponent and problem from their point of view, from the point, of, from the perspective of gaining uh, financial inclusion with a potential CBDC, right? That's kind of one of their initiatives in a way, and more or less, whether or not they get to it, it is what it is. Um, Another negative consequence would be, again, it requires trust in these trusted entities, um, which would include like the Federal Reserve, um, intermediaries to whatever extent they happen to be a part of the system. And I've done quite a few videos on those already. It'll be in the same playlist as this one, going 
between the pros and cons of different types or different degrees of intermediation, right? Basically, how much, how big, a, how large of a role banks, um, current payment systems, entities, and that sort of thing will already will participate in a potential CBDC system, right? And again, um, another neg another negative consequence is really this kind of centralization of data, which is really, and again, this is all in the trusted entities' hands, so kind of keeping that in mind. And we'll get a bit more into privacy, what exactly do they mean by identity-related information um, specifically, right? in the next coming weeks really so kind of wanted to break that up a little bit because it's a little bit more nuanced than just that right so i guess the biggest takeaway for permission to govern its structures for a cbdc would be it may or may not provide uh better protections right for users at the cost of transparency definitely at the cost of transparency it seems um and i kind of put may or may not again for the um better protections because there's you can definitely argue that you know the private sector could do it better um i would probably argue that the private sector can do it better but <laughs> that's my opinion not of not the opinion of the office of science and technology which is where they put it obviously they think the government can do it better but anyways if you guys like these kind of a little bit more nuanced deep dives into different characteristics of a potential us cbdc um, make sure to subscribe and i will also do a video on the contrast to this which is a permissionless government structure right i guess governance structure if i could speak um and that'll be linked in a car as a card at the end of the video um to really kind of because at least they do talk about it right they actually it was permissioned versus permissionless, right? In the paper themselves, and they tried to compare it a bit. And obviously, you can kind of tell when you're reading these things where they're kind of throwing their bias in a way, and it was rather heavily towards permissioned. Um, it is a CBDC after all, and it's kind of like, you know, if you give the government the option or the potential to kind of assume more control in some form or sense, especially they always pull the whole AML CFT compliance coming in there and that's really like you're not going to get away from that from the cbdc system in general but anyways i'm going to put that card for permissionless governance structure for us cbdc's and i hope to see you there